All right, YouTube, it's the Shadow King, King Nadru, here with a review for Rosario 2, Chapter 22. Skinny, uh, was just punching out God, uh, the sign who just calls himself that, not the Judeo-Christian. Uh, and Boca and Kurumu praise him because they think he's won. However, Ruby says otherwise because, uh, Skinny has just been stabbed in the arm and his rib, uh, by a a bunch of feathers. This was God using his uh, feather cutter technique. Uh, then God says that uh, he's getting sick of these uh, insects and uh, takes on his true form, which looks an awful lot like a dragon. I recall nowhere in Greek mythology where a siren looked like looked like a dragon, but. Let's just roll with it. Anyway, uh, Sun tells everyone to uh, stay back using her notepad because she doesn't speak, and uh, she's going to face God. However, Marin warns Sun to not do this because she's already injured, and uh, God blames Sun for being pushed this far and realizing that he's that she's not worth the trouble of making her join Fairy Tale. So he's going to kill everyone and use his ultimate attack, Symphony for the Devil, which is this huge sonic uh, vocal blast. Meanwhile, Gin and Haji continue to fight the fairy tale agents uh, while assuring themselves that uh, Sun will be just fine uh, if she is fighting an opponent, because Sun uh, is really strong for even by monster standards and has never been defeated. Basically, being the uh, inner mocha of her time. And Gen also notes that the notepad uh, is kind of like mocha's limiter, helping her conserve strength while, so she can augment her voice powers whenever she uses them. God uh, then starts to writhe in pain while wondering what Sun did. Uh, Sun says that she hasn't been using her full song and full power until now. Uh, she says that uh, ever since the battle started, she's been uh, setting up an elaborate song. And the song uh, uses high-pitched sounds that he couldn't hear, slowly causing internal injury, thus not allowing God to sing again. Uh, and i got to admit, that is pretty damn clever. I mean, son... It's not only powerful, but she's actually intelligent. This is very, very well done. How is it that a manga that has this good of writing falls into obscurity yet something as asinine as Naruto, who can't even stick to his own theme, gets praise and adoration? <sighs> this is incredibly depressing. But let's just move on. So, anyway... Sun says she'll be the instrument of Merit and her husband's vengeance, and God starts to fall apart uh, to Sun's attack, uh, Siren in the Dark, and he explodes. Hey, Sun, would you mind doing that to a certain group of characters? Their names are Sakura, Obito, Naruto, Sasuke, Kakashi. If you could just get rid of those characters, that'd be great. Oh, and also Karen. Get rid of her, too. Uh, anyway, uh, Sun now wonders if Marin thinks she's scary because of what she is capable of doing. So she offers her a stake for Marin to take her vengeance on God and against her for lying about, uh, I mean, for not so much lying, but not telling her that she was a monster. However, Marin shows she still cares for Sun and wants to rebuild the inn into the number one sea resort. Skune uh, then narrates that Sun's parents abandoned her at Yokai Academy and how this was like being embraced by her parents. Now that's touching. And nice, nice to get a little bit of backstory for her. Then we see Marin, Sun, and the newspaper club celebrating their victory. Uh, Gin arrives with Kurumu and Misery being pissed off for him not helping, 
and he lies about Miss Nekonami and Bus Driver making a monster concealing barrier so nobody would see them. But in truth, they were just uh, going on a date and fishing. Kurumu uh, then asks why he's getting covered in blood, and he says he and Haji uh, were, went shopping. If this wasn't taking place in, during the summertime, I would make a Black Friday joke, and it would have been funny. Haji then starts hitting on Kokua, despite her saying she's 15 and not a kid, but he says that her kid-like appearance is enough to turn him on. And this pisses off Kokua because she hates the notion of not being physically developed for a uh, teenager. Haji then is, uh, goes over to her son and says that he's pleased to be reunited with her. And the narrator also notes that the seventh branch of fairy tale has been wiped out. Kudos. Skune, uh, later that night, wonders why Mocha can't sleep. And uh, Mocha says she's glad she came to this uh, trip despite the ups and downs. And the experience assured her that monsters and humans can coexist. Uh, yeah, that's nice, but, you, but your own personal experience has been pretty much confirming that. This just kind of helps add that. But whatever. Uh, Marin tells Skinny she, she knows he's human and is attending Yokai Academy out of love after seeing him and Mocha. This pisses off Kurumu and Mizurai, uh, but he just says that um, Mocha just uh, started sucking his blood as per normal things and nothing happened. So, uh, Sun, however, complicates the matter by saying that she is now falling in love with Skune. And uh, she will be at his beck and whenever he needs her. Uh, again, uh, then gives Sun and Marin their bank book from Takahashi. And Kurumu deduces that Gen uh, must, lo uh, must love Sun. This was a pretty nice chapter. It, the, like I said, the past three chapters did not hit shit gets real. This was more like a, things were getting tense. Uh, but there were some moments where it almost seemed like it was hitting that mo level. Um, it was nice to get uh, get some backstory for his son. Uh, nice bit of story about forgiveness and redemption. How the girls are going to think about their future now that they've learned that they could that there is a chance that humans and monsters can coexist. And it was pretty nice to see Sun be pretty badass. So next time we'll see how things go in chapter 23.